Welcome everyone. This is Zahn with Repo Products. Um, I have a video here that I'm creating for an end user. Um, the end user said that they have a design situation where they need to create these columns and these curved walls. And they wanted me to figure out you know, what was the best way to do so. Um, when we look at creating columns like this, there's probably more than one way to do it. And I was thinking about it this morning, and there's at least three ways that I know. Um, the first way is if we just use the column command, and we go to the type selector, and we pick the kind of column that we want. When we go to place it, you'll notice that it's orthogonal. And if you use the space bar on your keyboard, it'll rotate 90. But if you place it on top of your curved wall, it'll angle and agree with the wall, and then you can place it. And then, um, obviously, double check things like the, de the depth or the height. And you'll also notice that other ones as well will align to the curved walls. So you can place them like this. And if that is the initial design intent, and that's how you want to construct it, then that's OK. Uh, and the reason I say that's how you want to construct it is because if this is a um, CMU wall, then you're placing a con a, uh, either a concrete column or some other type of column right there. This is a curved wall, and you've got a flat face of the column here. If we look at this in 3D, from a design standpoint, it'll look like this. Let me go ahead and grab all these walls, and let's change some stuff. I'm going to make it go up to uh, level 2 with a 0. And you'll notice that, and then this initial one here, we will put it back to the correct height. You notice that you've got curved walls, but you've got a flat column here. And if that's OK with you from a construction standpoint, then that's fine. You've got a curved wall coming in, and it hits a flat column, and then it continues to curve. Depending on how it's built, um, the GC builds it, it could be really you know, flush. So as long as you measure the thickness of the wall correctly, and you know exactly what that thickness is, you can adjust the size of the column to fit pretty much inside. Um, and that should do for most construction purposes, if, if that's the initial design intent. The second way, if you really, really want <clears throat> excuse me, curved columns, um, is to do an in-place family. So the second situation is here. I'm going to actually hide this um, image. And we can see the concrete column here. So if I unhide it, you can see the context of where the columns need to go. So for this one, we can just go ahead over to the component command. And if you expand it, you'll get model in place. And then you specify what category we want. So for now, we want structural columns. It'll ask us to give it a name. So we'll just say curved concrete column. Click OK. And then it goes into family editor mode within the project environment. And we can do something as simple as, say, an extrusion. So when we do the extrusion, we can use the pick line method because I have a wall here. And I have the other wall edge here. And then I can use the line command to draw roughly where I want. And then we'll use trim to corner to clean up the corners. like so. And then if we head over to, say, an elevation view or a 3D view, either one's fine, then we can get an idea of how tall that extrusion is going to be. We'll click the green um, check mark to let it finish building it. You could see it over here in the properties palette, and it's just a simple uh, one foot difference. But you can pull it up like this and align and lock it to the wall if necessary or to a reference plane if necessary. And again, if we look at this in 3D, you'll get an idea of what it looks like, which is over here. And that's going to be finishing the model. It'll get built, and it's in place. It's right there, and it's within the context of the project in the context of this curved wall. You can do this for all the other columns as well. I'm not going to do that, but you can do that approach. That's the second approach. If you do this approach, though, um, you're going to end up building a lot of in-place columns in the project, and that's typically not good. 
The third method is if we build the curved column as a separate family and load it into the project. And this, again, is going to be a situation where do we want it as a true curved column or just a simple rectangular column that's placed there and then it's constructed as though it looks like it's curved. Let's assume the end user wants to make it a true curved column. What we need to look at is what's the curvature of the wall? So this wall has a different radius or diameter, however you want to look at it, the same thing with this. So the curved column, the faces on this side and this side need to be curved and they need to be based off of a radius, which you might be able to um, change or if you want to change, you can change it and it will adjust accordingly. So how do we do this? I'm going to head over to creating a new family. So uh, I'm actually in Revit 2018.2, so I have to go to the file tab. If you're running 2017 or older, click the big blue R and you'll get the contextual menu that pops up. And we'll say new family. And we'll scroll down and look for structural column. Now, um, the initial image that was given to me, it looks like it's in metric. So uh, forgive me, I already started the video in Imperial, so we'll just run it with it this way. But the premise and the concepts are the same. So I'll start with the structural column Revit family template file and click open and you'll get um, some basic information already set up. You'll have reference planes that define the front, the back, the center, and also the left and the right side. And if you notice carefully, they'll also be named. You want to make sure you name your reference planes. The insertion point of the column is going to be dependent upon which reference plane has the define origins uh, property checked here, where two of them um, are selected where they cross, where they intersect, that's where the insertion point is going to be. Um, so I'm going to make it in this situation, uh, this part being flat of the column, and then we're going to curve it this way and then go flat again. So I'm going to use this intersection over here as my insertion point. So I'll select this one and I'll say define origins, and I'll pick this one and I'll say define origins. So it knows that this intersection is the insertion point. We do know that um, we want this side flat and then we want the curve to go around like this. If I go ahead and create an extrusion and start the extrusion command, you know, we can pick this line and align and lock it, but we can't do the curve over here and over here and we can't predict um, roughly where we want the other end to be. So let's say we go through the approach of creating a point out here as the center point of the radius of the um, curve of the column slash curve of the wall. We'll create a reference plane. So I'm going to back out of this extrusion command for now. And we'll create a reference plane. RP is the keyboard shortcut. But if you don't remember, you can go over here under reference plane. And we'll draw a reference plane this way. And then we'll give it a name center point of curve. And then we'll take this reference plane and extend it all the way across. So we've got an intersection to work with. Now, if I were to draw, we can't obviously, if we take a look at the command for a reference plane, by the way, or reference line, uh, reference line will give you curve, um, curve lines. Reference planes that command here only gives us straight and gives us pick method. So all I really need is some frame of reference to draw a curve. Um, so for now, let's go ahead and use, say, the reference line command and use this center ends arc tool. So we'll pick the center, pick this end, and then we'll move our mouse. And you can see how it drags and it gives us a line. So for now, I'm going to let it go all the way to that intersection where it crosses the horizontal reference plane and click and then I'll lock it to that. Now <clears throat> if I select that reference line you'll see it has a dimension and if I make that a hard dimension I can then parameterize it and let's go ahead and give it a um, radius of curve curvature for column. Now 
<clears throat> when you're naming your reference planes, try not to use spaces. It's a good habit. The other thing too is when we're building this column, <clears throat> because this column is curved and because it's going to go into multiple walls that are of different um, radius uh, or diameter, you may not want to do type. We'll do instance for now. And that way we have that as a radius that we can control. Okay. Then, because we need to do the same thing for this intersection here and come across, we'll do the same approach. We'll say create a reference line with a curvature, same same design situation, pick the center point, pick this intersection, and let it come up and hit that end, and then lock that. And we're not really concerned too much about this reference, uh, this radius. If we really want to be, we can parameterize that and have it associated to a formula based upon the first radius, maybe a certain um, uh, offset uh, distance uh, or measurement. Okay, so for now we'll keep it simple. So we've got this edge to work off of, these two reference lines to work off of, of and this edge to work off of to create the column. Now these ends over here that are straight, we have to look at it from the perspective too of this edge of the column if we really treat it properly, we want to make sure that it is going perpendicular to the face of that point out from the curve. Um, <clears throat> and so from this point here, we can draw that line. That um, We can draw the extrusion here. And then over here, we'll have to come out perpendicular. So if I say create a reference line from this end here and go out, you'll see it will want to automatically go perpendicular. So we'll let it come out to about here. It's just for reference purposes. I'm going to then unlock that one and pull that end up and place it and see if it'll let me do it. And if not, um, we will make the adjustments. So I'm only drawing this for the purposes of getting the curve as far as I need and here as far as I need so I can get this line and that curve, this line and that curve. Now that that's finished, I can go through the process of drawing with the extrusion command our curved column and in this case we'll use pick method which is the easiest and we'll lock it you can also click lock up here in the options toolbar and it will lock automatically and then clean up your line work remember you're in sketch mode so everything has to be a clean closed loop <clears throat> you don't want to have any gaps or overlaps or stray lines anywhere um, again for the height it defaults to a foot, and so if I head over to, the, say, the front elevation and finish the command, <clears throat> it'll give us the height. It'll give us the column. We can pull it up and adjust the height. If the height of the column needs to be parameterized as well, um, then if we go to the family types window, there may or may not already be a parameter for height, and there isn't. So we can just create a reference plane, and then give that reference plane a name and then align <clears throat> and lock the top of that column to that plane. We can then dimension from that plane to that level and then take that dimension and parameterize it and call it column height. And again make sure it's an instance because these are special column situations for your design. So we've done a bit of work <clears throat> and we need to kind of flex it, adjust the dimensions to verify everything's okay. So if I go to my family types window and I make changes to the height, say for example 9, what, does it adjust? Yes, it adjusts. What about <clears throat> the curvature as well? So this is where it's going to get fun. Right now it says 12.5, so if I make this say 15 feet and I hit apply, it adjusts. However, we have a weird situation here where, let's head back to the plan view, where it did adjust here. Um, this did not get adjusted because we didn't parameterize this curve. And if we did and made a, a relationship to this one, 
then this line would adjust accordingly. So you'll have to make that kind of adjustment as part of the design of the column. So for now, we're going to leave it the way it is. And we're going to save this file as a family. Place it wherever you need it. And I'll just call it curved column. And then I'll load it into the project. It'll go into the project, and then you can place it. So over here in the third situation, I can go ahead and I can place it. Now, obviously, when we design the column, we also have to keep in context the size of the wall as well. So we need to adjust the, the overall size of the column. You can see under the type properties, it may or may not have <clears throat> the information for the width and um, height. So if we head back to our column and we put in dimensions for the width, and parameterize it. And again, make an instance. We can then control the size of that as well. So let's make this a foot and hit OK. And it adjusts accordingly. See that? So now if we load it back into the project and overwrite the one that we have, it'll adjust accordingly. And then we'll have to um, move this and rotate it so it's inside the wall properly. So if I use the rotate command, I can click place for, say, this intersection for now, and then go from here and bring it down to roughly there. So you can go through that process and build it as a custom column this way. Um, the hardest part really is going to be making sure that that edge is perpendicular, and also making sure that the both radius dimensions are parameterized so they have a direct relationship to each other. I hope this video helps in explaining how to create these columns the way you want. Okay, thank you.